This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Here we are back with episode three of the original Mobile Suit Gundam from 1979. The plot is beginning to heat up in this episode. The crew is starting to come together as a more cohesive group, very, very slightly. And we're starting to see some of the larger themes of Gundam uh, start to get explored further here in this episode. So, as usual, the timestamp is unfortunately starting from episode one. Uh, it's not starting at zero, so we're starting basically like an hour in. Apologies for that, but uh, other than that, let's get into it. All right, let's get into episode three. Woohoo! Vote to attack. Vote to attack. Vote to attack. <laughs> Interesting the scale here. Yeah. How they're getting across, and it's kind of hard to see. Uh, the you know that's white base there in the kind of in the center, and so getting across is like how big this asteroid needs to be to actually provide that that support. That know. support and that all, all the the resources because they're mining it. Poor Bright, right. <laughs> just can't get a break. <laughs> Trying to make small talk with Sayla. So says, oh, how are you good? Do I have to answer that? Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And then she answers, and uh, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, and she's an Earthborn elite, are you? <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> never mind. I'm just going to stand at the corner over here and just <laughs> shut up. I do wonder, like, what this scene is for. I wonder if it's also to kind of humanize Bright a little bit, to point out that, yeah, he doesn't really know how to interact with people that well. Because um, yeah. he's a little sensitive here as well. Uh, also, that Sela is very sensitive about her past. Yeah, and well, you know, it's interesting that she brings up the Earthborn elite, yeah. <clears throat> which gives us a little bit of flavor of going, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, all right, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Yeah. yeah what, what is this? What does she mean by that? Mm -hmm. And then it also it spurs us to go, well, she knew, she thinks mm -hmm. she knows her brother. Yeah. And if they're on separate sides, is she, what is, she, what, why is she here? So, mm -hmm. you know, when she goes, do I have to answer that? Yeah. You know, now obviously kids are watching this, this, this show, so you need kind of that directness. But yeah. otherwise, I, if I was probably was like going, oh, really? Let's stop the elevator. Uh, security at, uh, you know, deck four or whatever. <laughs> you know, just because that would just be like in a wartime, just like going, yes, actually, you, you kind of. Do have to answer mm -hmm. that question. <laughs> <laughs> Although at this point, I mean, does Bright outrank Sailor? I not wonder. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he might not. Um, I have no idea where they are relative to each other, rank wise. Huh. Yeah. Don't know. All right. There we go. We're starting right. to see the bigger picture. Yeah. Um, don't have the resources we have in the past. We're spread thin. Interesting. I just gotta say. Yeah. That is a hilariously ridiculous design. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the evil eyes. eyes yeah, the, the, the grinning mouth. Mm-hmm. The vaguely cobra-shaped console <laughs> in the front. I love it, though. All right, so you have this interesting Everything, yeah. dynamic between these characters where Mirai and Bright are having this casual conversation. I wonder why we aren't being attacked again. Mirai comes up with this rationale and it sparks this whole conversation yeah uh, amongst everyone on the uh, on the crew and again think like Evangelion right? right you never get this kind of stuff in Evangelion no right folks no. aren't strategizing and oh we, if we did this we did that I mean they are between battles right but yeah like this is not the kind of thing you see typically right. in a lot of these shows because you know you don't have you know. <laughs> uh, but the, the idea that they can kind of challenge each other I think it's one of the, right. one of the neat things about this crew. Now that's an interesting point. Yeah. Bright goes, no, we can't do it. Uh, uh, not gonna happen. Then he asks uh, Navigator, how long will it take them to transfer supplies? Meaning he now believes they are transferring supplies. Right. He's on board with Mirai's view. 
Now, it's also interesting here that earlier, Bright says, I'm in command. Right. But then he, yeah, goes off on to a vote. Yeah. So it's like, uh, <laughs> pick a lane. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if he's being, I wonder if he's so uncertain about what to do. He's pushing off that responsibility here. Or is this going back, or is this could be just as petty as is going back on the conversation with Sailor in the elevator? Because he's the only one that, that he really truly reprimands. Because when he's talking to Mariah, they're yeah. actually having the conversation mm -hmm. going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that was Sila. She, she says whatever, and she's like, "I'm in command." Yeah. And it's like, okay, <laughs> okay, Ahab, all right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know. Maybe there's, <clears throat> maybe there's this kind of like, maybe that's part of his distrust, distrust mm -hmm. of her, or, uh, or yeah. something of that yeah, nature. Yeah, that's maybe. true. Yeah, I, I, I can see but, that. But still, I, I I'm, I'm like. If you're going to say you're in command, don't don't bring everyone to the bridge for right. a vote. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it is kind of strange. So this is an important point. Uh, when they vote, Amaro very deliberately is fiddling with his collar yeah. the entire time. In other words, not making a decision. Yeah. Choosing not to be responsible for it, yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I yeah. just, and, and again, I, I love the the body language here where she's like, I'm not speaking to you, yes. basically, yeah. but I vote. It's like <laughs> it should also be noted that Bright casts a significant glance at Amaro. Yeah. Point being, like, you're going to be involved in this. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, you know, you should have an opinion here. <laughs> yeah. It's literally your butt. Yeah, exactly. I do want to point out something, because you see it a lot in Gundam, and just from an animation perspective, they do this thing where in order to get across the fact that it's turning, it's two pull cells. So they have the background cell moving, oh, and the right, foreground yeah. cell moving, and white base is a very complicated shape to draw. So it would be incredibly time consuming to actually yeah. draw all that geometry turning. So it is a uh, yeah. smart, you know, time saving, you know, money saving thing to do it that way. I think one of the things they're doing here by showing this entire launch sequence is showing to us that everybody kind of sort of knows what they're doing now. Yeah. This is our first, okay, you know, we are deliberately launching and starting an attack, and everyone can do that. Yes. So, you know, we're starting off on the right foot. Okay, first off, magnificent mustache. Oh, yes, truly magnificent. My goodness. Kitchener would be proud. <laughs> but also, see what they're establishing here, that A, not only is it a an older uh, ship, but you have an older commander who's very prickly about it. Yeah. Which tells you more about, this actually reminds me a bit more like the American Civil War. Right. Uh, all of these like grand old generals who are like, I know how to fight a war. Yes. Like, mm, 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 okay. Yeah, we'll okay. About that. yeah. Yeah. And this is just sci-fi porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense of like, how do they do this? Oh, we're going to oh, show you. Yeah. Uh, right. Here's all this different stuff. But, like, I, This is the stuff that, granted, Myself as a you know twelve year old watching this would have been like ooh ooh this is neat yeah show me all of it. One other detail I appreciate: uh, there are guys on the top and bottom of the conveyor pipe because right. again no gravity right and because that makes you load faster. Yes, it's just you know thinking things through. It is interesting here how they're establishing the fact that for all that Amaro is a reluctant pilot, he has remarkably. Not only good pilot senses, but he is acting on them. Yeah. Um, and so he, it's not that he's a natural soldier, but that he is applying all of his intellect to the situation. Yeah. Using actual common sense. And I just like mm -hmm. how like Rio is just like going, oh, I, I, I should know that. And it's just <laughs> like, well, you know, buddy, you had two. Yeah. So you should have known that. But <clears throat> no, it, it is kind of interesting. Like like how it's a totally different. <clears throat> he's calm and mm -hmm. you know he's he's in charge of. And I think what it is is that it's a, finally a situation where he's actually not necessarily in charge of it, but you know mm -hmm. he's you know within the boundaries of just being okay. I know how to do these kinds of things, and yeah. nobody's shooting at me just mm -hmm. yet. You yeah. know, so everything he's been reacting to. So finally now. This is where confidence of being able to be on the attack and have somebody respond to you yeah. for a change gives mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. And to that point, actually, I wonder how much this is Amaro going. If we do this right, 
we can be surgical. Yeah. We can go in, do it, get out, minimal risk to us. Right. Uh, which is kind of his preference. Isn't it, is this the first time that we hear the Minovsky prophecy? I prophecies? think so. so yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Minovsky yeah. for the first time. Huh. I wonder why that is. Well, that would make sense, kind of, because we, we've just been in the hurly-burly of combat yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And now we oh. have a moment. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you, I mean, the density of Minovsky particles around a colony would be well known. Yes. And out in space, not so much. So right. yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. So a couple of things here. First, there's this really neat animation effect where you see the two trails of the ships going on. But instead of animating the trails itself, they're kind of erasing the trail as it, as it goes uh, up. Okay. And the way they're doing that, which is kind of hard to see, a little bit more of it, I, I suspect they have a black card that they're they laying just over just top, top of it, it. Okay. To, to make that happen. And then when you get, and again, I, I just love this. Yeah. When you see him here, there is the, not only the light behind him, but there's also this like wavy effect. Yes. In front to get across the idea of the heat of the sun. A few things to note here. First, great shot, Amuro. Yeah. Second, Star Trek bridge explosion. Bridge explosion. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Just love that. Uh, then third, what does the other commander do? Oh, he wants to run away. Yeah. yeah. Just he goes, oh, the, oh, oh my oh. gosh. Yeah. Get, get out of here. We're attacking. We must run. Go. <laughs> leave. Which is exactly what Shard didn't want. I must uh, save my mutton chops. <laughs> First names. True. He's naming people. Yeah. So it's not somebody get out there. Mm -hmm. there, there are names involved. Yep. So these are yep. these are people. When yeah. you when you put a name to something, mm -hmm. then you're just yeah. like even though you may never see Vince and Michael <laughs> if they die, you'll go, Oh, it's uh, Vince and Michael. Exactly. Yep. And the fact that Shar knows them by first name. Right. It's not, yeah. you know, Lieutenant Commander Smith. Right. Yeah. Um, I will also, in in uh, defense of the supply ship commander, as soon as they realize what's happening, he's like, okay, I got to get out of here because I'm not equipped for this. Yeah. And obviously he's like, but we have to get the mobile suits to Char. Right. We can't supply them, but we, we you know, that is the priority here. Yeah. That's a great scene. It is. That's a great scene. Completely quiet. Right. Just the missiles going, and then we hold for a few seconds. Yeah. And then the explosion that amps up the tension. I will give them credit. Yeah. Something we see all the time at White Base is nobody have to do any kind of turn. Your eyes going, yeah. <laughs> and they establish that here. Apparently, that is a thing you need to do. Yes. Turn it 95 times to execute any maneuver. Okay. I do want to point out Char's thought process here, where... He goes out, he tries to take out the missiles, but it's just too close, he can't hit them in time. And he goes, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Then the core fighter flies past and he goes, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm not going to be distracted by that. Right. You know, those shots must have come from a mobile suit, and it must be over there. Yeah. I'm going to go after that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> just the back and forth. And very uh, super robot. Yeah. Uh, but with the sun behind, it's where, I mean, Gundam is kind of starting to find that artistic sense right. in, mm -hmm. in it of where can we have a shot that can uh, get across a lot in those visuals. What is that in the lower right corner? 248.63? Yeah. Is that like a, a Z? I guess. So, is it like, a, like distance, like Z depth, maybe? maybe. Interesting. I didn't even notice that. Um, huh. Ah, cool. So, here's an interesting thing. Yeah. Up to this point, we have no idea about Kai. True. What he, what he knows right. how to do, what he's done. Yeah. And suddenly, he's he and Hayato... Now, Hayato, we can kind of understand why he might be there. Because mm -hmm. he's grasping onto things fairly quickly, yeah. and he knows mm -hmm. how to fire a gun, and yeah. that kind of thing. We know Kai knows how to fire a gun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but... Other than that, we don't know that Kai can do any of this You're stuff. You're right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's interesting. I, w I wonder... I'm slightly surprised they didn't establish that beforehand. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder. Um, you know, one of those things where perhaps it's one of those 
okay, we did. We have 20 things to do here. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We don't need to explain Kai. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and, yeah, we have such a tense episode. I think we needed a little uh, yeah. humor here. Contrast this with before. Now the Xeon are panicking. Right. So we, are, we have proof here that white base was correct. Yeah. This is what you need to do. Okay, so... Dran mentioned earlier, we let the engine power go down too low. Too low, yeah. So what that tells us is they had to power down their engines to do the transfer? No, to, to load up the mega cannon. To load up the mega cannon. Why? Well, so the Char gave the order to use the mega cannon. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they're trying to... To, so they had to decrease the power from the engines to the mega cannon, but it was going to take five minutes. So they were going to drop oh. down to Luna, to uh, to the to the surface, probably after they were attacked, yeah. and probably just to evade if anything else. So you think they had to like lower engine power to do the mega particle cannon? That's what I think. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That yeah. makes sense. Sorry, I just and again. There's only so much you can do in, in the, the time frame. But when Mirai goes, Ryu comes in, Ryu, Ryu, Ryu. Yeah. It's like, uh, give him a chance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's mention how, first off, what a great shot. Yeah. Of, you know, you see the Gundam tumbling back. He writes himself and then charges right there. Yeah. But also how completely outclassed Amaro is. is. You yes. know, he he's out of, of, of firepower, so he throws the, uh, the weapon... Which charges bats out of the way, um, bashes Amaro. Amaro flies away. Um, Amaro writes himself. Char is there. Amaro uses the Vulcans, and Char just kicks him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like everything Amaro tries to do, Char has an immediate response to. Yeah, but this kind of gives us <clears throat> a point to the whole super robot versus big robot mm. which is that the even though the Gundam is supposed to be a thing for the Federation to counter the Zakus with mm -hmm. it's not the savior robot yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> right yeah. you know it, this we're, we're learning oh. here what yeah. We're, yeah what we're learning here is that char is actually piloting piloting an inferior fighter mm -hmm. but because he's the better fighter himself, mm -hmm. it almost doesn't matter because you have an amateur with this humongous, powerful robot, but if you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't yeah. matter. And in a super robot show, what would have happened? Yeah, Either yeah. it would have, you know, overwhelmed it, or he would have said, what's what's this button do? Yeah. Power three! three. You know, yeah. right, and, you yeah, know exactly. some other thing comes out, out. Yeah. right? Yeah. But no, no, it's like, this is what you got. And again, to point out, um, this is not just... Uh, theatrical you know, fisticuffs between uh, Mecha. What Char is doing here is he goes, okay, I can tell my weaponry can't do it. I'm just going to bash it apart with my, you know, Mecha's bare hands. Yeah. I'm just going to beat it up and it's, you know, it's equipment. It's going to it's gonna take it, but no, like, okay, that's not working either. And, and imagine that confidence that you have in yourself with, yeah. and with the weapon that you have and knowing that your opponent appears to be, as you pointed out, an amateur, yeah. that you're just like, Fine, piece by piece, then. <laughs> right. Fine, you know, okay. You know, arm, leg, you know. Yep, exactly. So, again, to our earlier point. Yeah. What's Hayatou doing back on the bridge? Yeah. Uh, presumably, they just recalled whatever they were in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, that's not working. Come on back. Yeah. And now we get to see, oh, okay, Kai has this okay, ability. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the commander has now switched over into the, I've been doing this for so long. Just do the, get just them out there, yeah. go. And they're like, well, this isn't protocol. Go, just, mm. <laughs> just <laughs> figure it out. Figure it just <laughs> off, <laughs> off now. And his point being like, you know, um, again, we're in space. We don't have a, a catapult. It's literally physics. Just yeah, give it just a, a bit of a push. It will move. Unlatch. Shove. <laughs> All will be good. That's a great shot, actually. It is. Absolutely. You know, we, we see this coming in, and then he's, he's, he's gone. He's yeah. done. All right, so we're now establishing that Bright knows what should happen, but doesn't take into account the human factor. Right. 
I'm sorry. No, 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 Kai, you don't have much choice in the matter. <laughs> I mean, Kai, in a nutshell. <laughs> so a couple of interesting things here. Um, one is that, you know, sure enough, the plan worked. Right. So they were justified in doing this, you know, wiped out a bunch of different supplies, made it very hard for them. Um, also, here we see a Zaku-1, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the older model of mobile suit. Uh, because that's all they have. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, you know, you're a supply ship. You're not getting the latest models. You have to have your battle of the week. You have to have, yeah, right. you know, the the, the, the rivalry <clears throat> of the week. But what we saw established earlier is how thoroughly his ship got trounced. Yeah. You know, seeing the guy die in his arms. Yeah. Right. Like it does establish the fact that he's like, no, no, this is personal. Yeah. I'm I'm going. And again, writing perspective, what did we establish early in the episode? Right. So uh, his plan was, he doesn't have a weapon, that's okay, I'll just bash him. Right. Shaw goes, I just tried that, it didn't work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what they're doing here, I think, is establishing more of Shar's obsession with white base moving forward. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, you know, okay, maybe they got lucky. No. No. Okay, they have good weapons, but they're not well trained. That's not it either. Right. Um, they're definitely not very well trained, but, like, they did massive amounts of damage. Um, and the fact, which he doesn't re reference here, like, directly, but that, like, they were smart enough to launch a surprise attack. Right. Um, like, this is a, you know, white base isn't just some piece of technology, whatever. Like, this is a special thing that we have to be very careful about. Right. It also does a good job of continuing to explain why each side doesn't wipe each other out. Right. That there's always extenuating circumstances that keep them from going, and it's not just, you know, right. curse you, I'll get you next hey, time, time, gadget. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, like, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, combat really isn't that big a deal. That's okay, so this is interesting. Um, the logic behind uh, each side. Right. Because Bright says you rely too much on your flanking maneuvers. Amaro says he was just too fast. They're kind of both right. Right, yeah. Um, if if Amaro hadn't, if Amaro had realized how much danger he was in, he would have changed his tactics and, and done something. On the other hand, Amaro was doing the best he could. Right. Like, there, there's there's only so much you can, you can expect out of somebody. Wait a minute. Yeah, that was so sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> that was so sarcastic. <laughs> Um, I was just like, uh huh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and Price is going, uh, you're within the limits, buddy. <laughs> Next time, kill all you. Mm -hmm. Next time, literally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm sure or, they had written the bright slap. By yeah, this point. Well, I did. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be like, oh, that was such an unfortunate thing to say, Armaro. And look at Rio's reaction. It's like, like, oh, God, come on, dude. Uh, and again, we're contrasting sort of the soldier versus the not soldier. Right. Where Rio, and Rio is, is able to talk back to Bright to say, no, 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 like you're misreading the situation. But also, he does not understand why Amaro has this massive chip on his shoulder. Right. And I think this scene is here also to remind us that this is an active warship. Mm -hmm. And there is, no matter what sort of roller coaster we have in terms of the main plot, there's always people doing things. Yeah, and there's a point where you have to say, okay, well, <clears throat> the the Gundam can't be out doing all the things. Mm -hmm. And here's Amaro just going, like, minefield, oh, that's the... <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> right. We'll let these guys handle it. They're competent, mm -hmm. they're fine, I just need to... Shut up here and just drink my tea. Yeah, exactly. Now, what I find interesting thing, the thing mm -hmm. interesting thus far, and I mm -hmm. had forgotten about this on the first watch, mm -hmm. was that the fact that they had scored a victory, like a legitimate True. victory, like Absolutely like they, right. they were able to destroy a ship, disrupt mm -hmm. supply line. They were able to do, and and on their own initiative. So this wasn't yeah. just them responding. Right. They were just like, you know, this is our attack. We did the thing. And we oh. were successful. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, you know, 
And so, you know, they, everyone comes back, and everyone's just like, <laughs> and, and, you know, the tensions are running high, and you're just like going, Where, where's an attaboy for anybody? Exactly. You know, not just down, bro, but just for anybody. Just like going, yo, guys up there, thanks for being on top of it, you know, or it's something, anything. You don't, you don't see any of that. And I think that's why they had the boat. Because from a, because I think what they're pointing out is that wasn't Bright's intelligence to say, let's do this. Everybody is like, this is the right thing to do. Right. They did that, and it succeeded. Yes. So this is a, an effective crew, not right. just an a, effective commander. Right. right. Yeah. Now, I forget. Mm. White base doesn't actually transform, right? Correct. Not, not like the SDF one. Correct. No. But it looks like it could. It does. It looks like it should, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the wings fold in. Right. Um, and I don't know why the wings are out, actually, here. For although I say that, I may be mis- I mean, that may be a retcon that they added because right. I, I know in like the origin you see it, you know, rah, rah, yeah. But that it might just be a fixed wing, yeah. Um, in the original show, interesting shot too. Yeah, I, I will say that um, each time I watch this and I, mm. and I and I have that disconnect of the white base and its scale when it's by itself. Because mm. when you look at it like this, it, it, it really does, A, look like a toy. Yeah. And, and B, it doesn't look that big. True, yeah. Right? It mm-hmm. doesn't look big, but yeah. you know, inside it has to hold uh, a gun cannon, mm-hmm. a core fighter, a gun dumb, and the crew, and yeah. um, guns and missiles and things. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's obviously a big ship, but mm-hmm. like when you look at it from this point of view, it's kind of like, Oh, you're so teeny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is of a time when, and this is of a budget where right. they just can't throw all the little greeblies on it. Right, to right, make it look, exactly. Make it this, yeah. The sense of scale, so you're just limited, which I think is why they rely so much on like the the hero shots. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, it, yeah. To give that sense of scale. Um, otherwise, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. It, you you do, but then also, I think especially in these shots, they are. Reminding us that they are a tiny little ship in the vastness yeah, it's, it's of space. space. Yes, and so which which I, I think works so well at the point of, of the episode where now that we're away from side seven, now that we're on our own, it's a very different kind of conflict. Yeah, um, you know now we we're we have to make these decisions, we have to figure things out because we are cut off. Right, um, and I, I wonder if that is kind of presaging what's about to come. Up where, you know, they decide to, or then they get to Luna two, right? Not really a safe haven. No, not <laughs> and so really. there, you know, there's more of this to come where they're kind of yes. on their own doing the, doing the, their best, and it's it's hard to get that across without like these shots of, you know, we're just we're moving along and hoping, yeah. hoping for the best. Yeah, um, we get a lot of I think in Gundam we get a lot of. From particularly from the Xeon side of, mm. it's a matter of honor. Yeah, and then as soon as somebody says that, you're like, ah, okay, you're dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're gonna die. You're gonna yep. die soon. Mm-hmm. But um, y- you know, we're we're you know, what's really kind of interesting is that you know, as we're taking the macro look at it, and we're realizing that the, the Xeons are spread thin. Yeah. So we're realizing now more and more the importance yeah. of White Base and Gundam yeah. that they can maybe tip the scales a little mm-hmm. bit. And I think it's interesting how later on in the series, while we focus on Gundam, we realize what the actual impact of it is mm. on the actual war overall. Yeah. You know, you know, and you just realize, oh, because here's the thing that's unsaid, mm-hmm. and I think I, I don't think this is a spoiler, mm. but this is the prototype Gundam, but it's not the only Gundam. Yeah, right. It's it basically what all this is is it's a prototype to be replicated. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like we're gonna have the one Gundam going taking on all the Sakus. <laughs> no, they're they're trying to make a thing yeah. that we're gonna make one F eighteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna take out everybody. No, but it, but to that point, it's you know this is the thing that that they're like okay we have to get these things to mm-hmm. a place where we can download the information and you know make make more mm-hmm. you know the you know actually mass produce this kind of thing yeah and <clears throat> and so that's you know kind of white white base's mission right now mm-hmm. is is to yeah. 
use the Gundam effectively, but also protect it effectively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because right now, the obviously one of the big things about Gundam, original Gundam, mm-hmm. is that people make the analogies between this and World War II in Japan, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. And this is the point <clears throat> in World War II where Japan realizes that their industrial capacity is just not up to stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so they're just trying to figure out how to continue to prosecute the war and what straws yeah. you're going to grasp at. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, the Federation is just like going... We're not doing so good either, and we need something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Zeon is, is clearly the, you know, okay, we're, we're, we're spread too thin, and this is kind of the, you know, the Spitfire, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the various things. Where it's like, oh, yeah, we can manufacture, we can build new, new yeah. things. Um, let's talk, though, about Zeon, because mm-hmm. one of the things, I didn't realize this until Double Zeta Gundam, two series f- uh, future, something that they established but don't explain but I think you can understand from context you have these guys who are all about honor and all about the glory of Zeon Zeon's a year old yeah so where did that come from something they, they explain later on is that when you are first establishing a nation you there's a tendency to overstate yes the power and to have this sense of oh we have all sorts of history we have all sorts of legacy yeah. That you try to weave in to build up your you to know, build up the story the, the yes. story of your yeah. nation. And that's a lot of what's going on here. Is is that they have this sort of over the top um, um, sense of, of duty and honor and and um, of just the, the state of Zeon being Zeon. And you know, because when the the guy the, the captain of the old yeah. supply ship says. I've been killing enemy more longer <laughs> than you have and ever will. It's just like the war has only been going on. Mm, so what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where else did you fight? What, <laughs> what are you saying? So, <clears throat> yeah, so there is that. Uh, you know, the when you watch Gundam Origins and you see mm. more about that and, and, and you see more about this, uh, about... The internal politics of mm. the Zabis and the various families, the Rabba Ra- the Rawls, and, mm. and um, and you know what, uh, um, Shar and, and Selma from yeah. Sela are from. Um, then you get more of a sense of history from yeah. a Zeon perspective, and yeah. you realize that this is like when they establish the colonies mm. and they they're you're doing their own little nation building. Mm-hmm. A lot of what goes back to the Zeons are these royal families yeah. so to speak mm-hmm. really they, what they were, were they were the rich mer- merchant families that were able to make the side work yeah. and yeah. they became the leaders mm-hmm. of this so so there is yeah. some oh yeah a little bit of a legacy there but not enough to go for the greater glory of Zenon <laughs> of which we are now 13 months old exactly you yeah. know. The, 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 I mean the colonies have been around for well 79 years in terms of like the establishment of the universal century but the colonies right. as like Construction and so forth have been around for a long time, right? right? So right. you have many generations going back, maybe not you know tons of them, but right. multiple generations going back of these families and a you know divergent culture. Yes, as that happens, so yeah. Zeon is kind of building on top of that. You know that that's funny. Um, I'm going to do a deep deep sci-fi dive here. Mm. Um, I think it's deep. It mm. depends on our viewers. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Foundation Asimov. Oh, yeah. And um, the uh, the robot story is Daniel mm-hmm. Giscard and uh, Bailey. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that they talk about is mankind on Earth, stuck on Earth, mm-hmm. and then the spacers. Mm-hmm. And the spacers are the people who are oh, actually yeah. col- that left Earth to colonize all these different planets. Yeah. And their culture, spacer culture, has become so radically different. They live longer. They have yeah. a different, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing and, <laughs> and going on. And, like, one of the planets, I think, is, like, they they have such an isolationist attitude that, like, they get married and see each other once a year mm-hmm. just to do the thing, and, yeah. so to speak. And, <laughs> you know, so, and other spacer cultures are like that. So, yeah. you know, talking about how, like, how you said, you know, divergent yeah. culture and it is well, like when you see the side sevens versus, mm. particularly actually in MS eighth team where mm. they talk where they make a big deal about the air conditioning. Oh, and interesting. You know, yeah. how that, the one pilot they're just like, yeah. oh yeah, you're not used to the air, yeah. air of birth and That's things right. like that. That's right. Yeah, stuff like that. So this just kind of reminded me of Asimov's mm. um, yeah. <clears throat> spacers versus versus Earth. Yeah, 
kind of kind of conflict. I, I'm almost certain Asimov was an influence. On yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That 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 whole idea was definitely, I would say, first popularized by him in yeah. science fiction. Yeah, um, and it it does again again so many things they're they're setting up here is why is this war happening? Right. You know, not just you know the 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 conflict, not not just the fact that independence was was declared. Why did they declare independence? Right. Why do they see themselves as different? Right. And all of these little hints you're getting throughout the show yeah. is, well, they are kind of their own culture. They are, they are, they are doing their own thing. Have an identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, origins, you know, we talk, uh, they talk, we, they talk about, um, you know, how they have their own military schools on Xeon. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then there's Federation <clears throat> military schools. Mm-hmm. And the Federation is usually... Like they send some token officer that oversee the, the <laughs> induction of the candidates into the Xeon school, and they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, that's cute that you have that, but okay, well, well, well mm-hmm. thank you for the salute." Yeah, you know, kind of thing going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's almost like a Babylon Five thing where mm. where um, you come to realize nobody's really good, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. you know, mm-hmm. and and you know some of the. You know, in Babylon Five, the the or the Earthlings are not always you know the plucky race Ooh. that Q admires. You know, <laughs> right? They're they're more along the lines of, you know, oh, we're just going to take over the universe. No, you're not. Mm. No, you're not. There's forces you do not understand. Yeah. But but the point point being yeah. is is that the humans are just they have their own agendas and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you have these sides that decide to stay neutral or they mm-hmm. or they join up with Xeon, because that's the other thing, is that it's not just one side of Xeon. Yeah. It's it's a bunch yeah. of other allies that are mm-hmm. that are with him on this. Mm-hmm. And um, you know they you come to when when the when the story when you watch watch this and the story comes mm-hmm. back to Earth, you're gonna see some stuff. Yeah. From the Federation mm-hmm. side of things, yep. that, that is not not kosher no. at all. And that's where it's important, like in general, what we're talking about here is to remember yeah. that this is not a World War II allegory. Right. Right. They are clearly inspired by World War II in some mm-hmm. aspects, um, but like, um, like a lot of people get 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 confused about kind of w- what they're pulling from and so forth, and it's more like, eh, this is a. Um, so and a lot of people are surprised by our viewpoint that the Xeon are basically Japan in yeah. World War II because that is what Japan saw itself as yeah. this independent force that was trying to um, uh, stand up against the might of the you know the, the, this this uh, global superpower right um, and despite the World War One era like military uniforms right. and so forth. But I think that the the metaphor uh, uh, works uh, better. But like that is one of many things they're doing. Like, yeah, this yeah, is not yeah, meant yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, right. You know, this is what is going on um, uh, in there. And um, uh, yeah, so that that's a, that's an an important qualifier. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting that for any people who are going to continue watching this series mm-hmm. to understand is the following. You are not going to get from watching this particular series mm. a definitive answer as to why this war is happening. True, you're going to have to read into it. Yeah. You know, there, and there's plenty of clues there. It's not yeah. like it's 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 a hard mystery to unravel. No. But there, nobody's going to come out and say, "This is why we're going to war. Mm. This is why we're doing the thing that we're doing. This mm. is you know, you're going to get to a lot of the greater glory of Zion, <laughs> and you're going to have Earthlings are just going to be like, "All right, get off our planet," yep. and you know that kind of stuff. But as so often it is in war, sometimes you forget why you're fighting. Like, why, why, well, why are we doing this? And even when you don't, like, there's a great episode of New Doctor Who where there's a uh, an invasion by essentially um, uh, the. It's clearly a, 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 a version of like Middle Eastern terrorism, right? It's, it's it's kind of a metaphor for that. And the Doctor comes in to oh, try yeah, to stop right. all of this. And he basically makes the point that it doesn't matter why you start a war. People still die. People on your side die. There are all these consequences to that. And, it, it you know, you can never pinpoint the point at which, right. like, one side should have done that. Or, you know, what is... It's always this, all of these forces all coming together. 
which then pushes you over. So it is complicated, and it's one of the things that Gundam does is present that it is complicated. Right. Um, it's not just like we, you know, like World War One, World War Two. It's like assassination Archduke Ferdinand. Kinda. I mean, it, it, it's the touching uh, off point, right? But you know, it's not really the reason. There's mm-hmm. so many other things going yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and credit to to Gundam, where yes, it does have the opening monologue of here's what's happened up to this point. Right. Um, but it is not. Um, it's remarkably undefinitive yeah. about individual motivations and things like that. It's just like yes. you know, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. This is where we are. It's a very dispassionate of here mm-hmm. we are. Here, here we here, here are the major events that got us to yeah. this horrible, horrible <laughs> point in human history, mm-hmm. and you know, this is what's going to happen moving forward. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so just be warned that you're not really going to get it. Even when you watch uh, Gundam Origin, Origins, mm. you still don't get a sense of that. But what you do get a sense of is the tragedy of the Zabi family, and I yeah. do mean that in all sense of the term, because in, you know the Zabis are as you watch this still. You know, it's Z- the first member of the Zabi family you came across was Dozel. Yeah, and so he's actually the most tragic one of all of them mm-hmm. um, but you're going to come across the entire family and yeah. in the original series they come across in a certain way mm-hmm. and they all have their own personalities but when you watch Go- uh, Origins you realize mm-hmm. they were trying to do this or Zabi the Deg- mm-hmm. the, the Deg- Degwin Zabi mm-hmm. was trying to do this in the m- least violent way <laughs> possible Yeah, and he just looked at his, his family just went <laughs> All right. Okay. This is what we're doing now. Yeah. Consequences. Yes. Unintended consequences. Unintended consequences. Yeah. Um, It's gratifying going back to these first three episodes and realizing just how much is there. Yes. How much groundwork is being laid and that it does... um, A lot of anime series, you go back to the first few episodes and and you realize that they're finding their feet... Doesn't feel like that here. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, no. Like they, they, they very much know what they're doing. And th- there are some elements like animation style that kind of evolves and changes and they, right. of, they, they figure out some things. It gets more dynamic as the show goes on. Um, but it. When people talk about Gundam as like this legendary series, there's a reason for it. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, this is one of those, one of those series where it, it, we just. We talk, it takes, what, an hour, hour 15 yeah. minutes for us to go through each episode to, mm-hmm. to, to stop and, and talk about this thing. But yeah. that's the whole point. Think about the creation of that. You know, yeah. where, they, where they sit there and they go, okay, here's the story. So you have this amazing story mm-hmm. and you have all these characters that, that you're plot lining, yeah. you know, trying to you know, navigate, see mm-hmm. where, where you're going to take them through, through the whole thing. And then, then, of course, there's the animation part of it. And if people go, oh, 70s animation, 79. No, you got to understand that, you know, this was all, you know, groundbreaking work yeah. almost. And uh, A, and B, to not only have the story plotted out, but to visually plot it out yeah. and do these things. And to me, everything is done on purpose. There's nothing accidental here. To that point, uh, do yourself a favor. If, you, if you're if you curious about the animation style oh, yeah. of things, yeah. go back to other anime made in 1979. Yeah, like find those fan subs and so forth, and look at the animation quality, and you will find that um, Gundam is at least on par with, if not you know above them. Right. And especially as the, the series goes on, it starts to kind of find that style. Ex- um, exceptions being like World Masterpiece Theater, kind of right, stuff like yeah. Green Gables, stuff that are like made for children and that have a budget where they're like, okay, this is a um, this is meant to be a quality show. Right. right. This yeah. is meant to be a a classic that our children will grow up with. So the 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 expectations are different. Yes. As opposed to a Saturday morning adventure toy commercial kind of a thing that the right. that most anime was assumed to be at the time. Yeah. And you will learn very quickly if you haven't already why he's called Kill 'Em All Tone Leno. Yes, you will. <laughs> And the fact that this is not where he got the moniker. <laughs> yeah. Sadly. Uh, uh, yeah. This is one of his better shows. <laughs> <laughs> On that score. Boy. Um, yeah, any other final thoughts 
on. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go back and watch this now. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just, you know, obviously I'm not going to do the whole. That would be mm-hmm. kind of odd at four o'clock in the morning by myself <laughs> in my apartment going, oh, and this is the thing. And he's, yeah, stop me. No. <laughs> Actually, just, just watch it and, yeah. just, and just enjoy it again. And, um, you know, kind of relive the franchise, so to speak. I'm glad you brought this up. This is one of those shows. We've all had that experience where we go back to older shows, and even if we, you know, appreciate it and like it, and we're like, yeah, this is this is really impressive. We don't necessarily like go back and like rewatch the entire thing. Right. We'll go back and watch a little bit of it. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. But like, I've had my experience. This is a show that I will go back and right. happily like every couple of years we watch the entire thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there there is that there, and it goes so far. So far, <laughs> so far, and there and there there will be moments where you're just like you know, of course, sad moments, yep. and blah blah blah, and all that stuff. And then there's gonna be the horrifying moments when, like, mm-hmm. when they show her dropping off the head of the Zaku, and I'm like, okay, well, that's too. Oh my God, they showed the whole thing. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Yep. You'll find that episode, exactly. and you'll know exactly mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> all right, that's episode three of Gundam. <laughs>